Are you ready to learn? Who is ready to learn? I don't see any hands. Okay, need a little bit more positive energy than that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chicken. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Great. Thank you. I have curated uh, some replays for you. And I would like to share with you all. Let me block this guy real quick. Uh, just so that they can't whisper me during the game or anything like that. Um, I have curated some replays that we're going to take a look at. And I am going to explain one of the uh, biggest things I think that you guys can do to improve ZVP. Not improve necessarily all around, but it is a, it is a, I think, a, a critical skill for Zerg to be able to analyze and decisively act against Protoss Walls. You saw the advantage of doing that in the last game, but I, I don't think there's ever been anyone that's sort of explained what kind of walls are we looking for, what kind of walls can we exploit, and uh, what should I do against those walls? Should I do Ling Floods? How many Lings should I make? When should I make them? Do I get speed? Do I get Banes? All of these questions I can uh, I can explain to you guys. So with the help of Mr. Jigsaw earlier today, I uh, banged out like five different Protoss games. He played Protoss. He walled off uh, to my specifications. So I wanted to show you guys very specific scenarios. <clears throat> Of what to do i'm a big fan of ling flooding i think that uh, if you sense any sort of weakness in their wall you should do it every time regardless uh, i mean unless they defend it like perfectly which usually involves like an adept scout reacting to the amount of drones all of these things um they're going to take some amount of damage and your lings more times than not are going to be worth it um so without too much more explanation i can just go into um into the replays before i do there are two different types of i would say floods that i'm going to show you here one is just a pure ling flood uh that takes advantage of ling speed it hits right as soon as ling speed is done um and it takes advantage of several different types of walls that i'm going to show you here the second one is a bane bust so a lot of people like to Bane Bust. Bane Busting can work even if it is a good wall, uh, just because you could potentially kill the unit that's in the wall and then your lings flood in. I don't usually like doing that because if they're <clears throat> if they're ready for it or their units are positioned uh, properly, then you won't really get any damage done. And Bane Busting is very expensive. Uh, if you just do lings, that's all mineral based. It's not a big deal. You're not taking any extra gas, anything like that. Um, so it's not too bad if even if you don't do like massive amounts of damage when you go for bane busting though that is a much much more expensive i would even put it in the all-in category there where if you fail a bane bust you're not able to do enough damage the rest of your game is going to be severely impacted because of it so what are the two types of bane busts that i like to do and what are the three types of ling floods that i like to do um i have them here the three that I like to do is if they have, or sorry, the three ling floods, so lings only, that I like to do is if they have a building that's too exposed, so their wall is not made in such a way that it reduces the amount of surface area. Before we actually go into it and I explain them, what should a Protoss wall accomplish? Right? Let's actually start there. A Protoss wall should accomplish a few things. Um, primarily it's to keep out early game zerglings and early game banelings from just running in and killing all of their probes right typically they have to do that with at least three buildings some of times there there are maps that are in the pool that do it with two buildings two buildings it's much easier to wall off right um <clears throat> but beyond that beyond just the simple protect them from from you know having any units just walk into their to their base they want to construct it in such a way that makes it a strong wall. So we can kind of divide them into strong wall and weak wall. Strong walls are, are going to be airtight, so there's no extra gaps. They have one little gap that's one hex wide that they can fit in any of their early game units except for Archons. So one hex wide gap. Um, it's not 
to the buildings are positioned in such a way that reduces the surface area as much as possible so that you can't get a really good surround on all of their buildings. And the third thing that it should do is allow for space behind the wall to re-wall off. So what I mean by that is, let's say I flood them anyways, if I have enough stuff, they're going to be in trouble, so they'll need to put buildings behind. However, their pylon can block it, or they can position things in such a way that they're unable to really do that, and they can't wall off properly, and eventually they'll just take too much damage and they'll die. Okay, so that's what a strong wall does. We're not looking at any of those. We're going to try our best to identify weak walls. I don't want to even show you what strong walls look like because if you know what weak walls look like, anything that's not one of those, you could just go, okay, maybe I don't link flood this game, right? So a weak wall can be comprised of, there's several, there's, there's lots of stuff actually that can make a weak wall. Um, the ones I'm going to show you today are the most obvious ones. Uh, and that's things like, the pylon in the wall so if they use the actual pylon that powers the buildings near it to wall off that is a massive error on their part and is the most obvious type of issue and mistake for a wall off that you're going to see if they have their gap too wide for the unit that's sitting in it your links can literally just run past it it's like having you know just like a not an airtight wall so basically there's an extra space somewhere um, and that causes them to spend more money to reinforce it. And typically they have to reinforce it with pylons, which are not very strong. Uh, and then the more subtle types of walls are they have a building that's a bit more exposed than it should be. Or they have a pylon that is very close to that gap and very close to the unit that's in that gap. So a Bane Bust won't only kill the uh, unit that's in the wall, but it'll also kill the pylon that's behind it. So the splash damage from a baneling is pretty large. So it can actually kill the pylon behind it even if you don't detonate on the pylon itself. So I'm gonna go from uh, easiest to identify to most difficult. We're gonna go over the ling floods first and then the second part of this, we're gonna go and do the bane bus. We'll just break them up into that. So the easiest uh, ling flood that you're gonna be able to do and just get a quick win on is if the gap is too wide. So let's go ahead, we'll take a look at that right now. And all of these, while we're loading in, and I'll fast forward through the beginning part of this and then I'll fast forward through all the rest of them as well. All of these are done with a completely standard build opener. Um, we're not doing any 16 pool shenanigans. They, like I said, they need to scout with the adept and really see the drone count if they want to identify, hey, they're going for a link flood. Or, of course, see all of your links standing there. And I'll give you guys some tips as well for that. How to make it more difficult for them to get that information. Okay, so it's a standard 16, 18, 17. Nothing changes in this build until we take our third base for the link flood. For the Bane Bust, we do something just a little bit different. But it's still a very standard 16, 18, 17 opener, no matter what. So you don't have to decide this. You get to see the wall first, and then you get to choose what you want to do. Okay, so as always, we send our first overlord across the map. And let's take a look at what we see, okay? We see nothing too crazy, honestly. Two buildings, the pylon. The pylon is not in an optimum position, an optimal position, I should say. Uh, simply because of that re-wall off um, that I was telling you guys about, if they tried to put another building down, this pylon would be in the way, right? So that's already error number one. Not too big of a deal, though. I usually don't link flood based off of that alone. So we just continue our build as normal. It's not until they put down the second structure that I decide to actually go for the link flood here. So I full pull off of gas. I get metabolic boost, everything standard. But right here... When they put their second building down, that's when they've made a mistake. Okay, so if you do, like, it's hard to see if you just look at it like this. You go, ah, it looks kind of strange. If you want a very, very easy way to see it, all you have to do is actually drag your mouse like this, and it'll show you. You can see, right, you can see that it has all the building circles for exactly how wide they all are. And you can see right here, this... This, I'm trying to get it so you can see both of them. Sorry, right? 
here. This is too wide. This gap is too wide. It should be about this wide. So you can see there's an entirely second lane that's opened up here. That's way too wide, so I can see now. Oh, perfect. Let's go for a Ling Flood. At minimum, we're going to we're going to get damage done um, just because they're going to have to contribute more units to this. Uh, and even if they manage to hold the Ling Flood, the damage that you do can still be significant enough to make it worth it, right? So this is going to be a very quick and easy game. I think he canceled it simply because he wanted to, he, he kind of put it in a different position. Again, they're in call with me, so I'm telling them what kind of wall to make, right? So he just canceled it. Obviously, they won't really do that in a normal game. Um, okay, so where does our build change? Let me back up just a little bit. <clears throat> so we see the building. We've decided, okay, we're going for a Ling Flood. Once you've decided you're going for a Ling Flood, this is what you're going to do. You're going to put your third hatch down like normal. And at that time, your queens should be right about done. Okay, what you want to do is actually double inject. So normally we would only inject one hatchery and then we would creep tumor here. We want to double inject. If the Protoss is really paying attention with their scout, they'll realize that you don't have a creep tumor. Uh, and the only reason for that really is so that Zerg can either make a whole bunch of lings or make a whole bunch of drones. So the second thing they should do is scout your natural here. If you really want to be cheeky, and I've been doing this in a couple of my games, just pull like six drones, maybe six, seven down, and put them into your natural. That forces them to not only scout your natural, but also scout your main. Okay. And so let's see in production, we're 30 supply. <clears throat> We made a drone. We're back up to 30 after making our third base. And we've made an overlord. We want to get up to 44 supply maximum here. From this point on, we're only making Ling Floods up to about 42 supply. Okay, so we have already our four Lings from the beginning of the game. I'm pushing them forward here just so that I can see is there any Adept. Because what these Lings purpose is, is to try to pressure any Adept scouts that might be coming through. Um, in order to um, <coughs> force them to shade earlier. Now, I know because of my Overlord that he didn't send an Adept across the map, so I don't have to worry about hiding these Lings. You can hide them in the main. You can hide them over here. You can hide them wherever you need to. The point that you want to... The, the main thing you want to do is make sure they don't see your eggs hatching. It's rare that it happens, but if they see any extra Lings other than these four... They will think something's up, and a majority of Protosses will, like, put shield batteries down or put down gateways and things like that. Okay? Before 3.30, you can go as early as 3.20, I would say. In fact, I still have Lings on the way. We want to prioritize hitting with, with Ling speed as soon as it's done. Okay? Ling speed finishes right around 3.30. And as you can see, it is way too wide, so the Lings are just going to run in. Get a full surround, make sure you kill the probe, and then kill the pylon. It's GG. Game's over. Doesn't matter that he has a Void Ray. And yeah, right? So we just go in, we kill a whole bunch of probes. The game's done at this point. If they stay in, if they try to micro probes, it's just really not going to work. I mean, one Void Ray cannot kill all of these lings fast enough. Okay? <clears throat> uh, so that is the most obvious ling flood that you can do. Um, that, is, that is the worst wall I think that Protoss can make is if they have too wide of a gap. Okay, let's show you something a bit more difficult, but uh, still one that you guys can learn from here. So this is a another, um, another game, another wall, obviously. And this is one, while this one is loading up, and while it's, it's exactly the same, exactly the same, I'll wait until the Overlord gets to about here, and we'll take a look at what I see that makes me want to flood this. Okay? Uh, so again, 16, 18, 17. Let's talk about good maps to flood on versus bad maps to flood on, okay? Typically, the best maps that you're going to want to do Ling Floods on or Bane Busts on are uh, maps that do not have ramps up to the natural. So for this current pool, it would be Berlingrod, uh, Glittering Ashes, and Hardwire. Those three would be the ones you'd want to go for. Uh, the ones that have ramps that go up to the natural, 
the buildings that they put down form a bit of a concave and your lings won't be able to get as much surface area, which is typically pretty bad. The exception to this rule, I would say, is Pride of All Terrace. Pride of All Terrace has a really nasty and difficult um, wall off, and it makes it very difficult for them to, um, to actually do that properly. Okay, so the Overlord gets here, and I decide, okay, we're going to go for a Ling Flood. Why do I decide that? I see that the Cybernetics Core looks a bit too exposed. So a good wall <coughs> will make it so that there's only, like, one side of surface area available on all buildings with just a tad bit available for one of the buildings on the sides. Anytime there's a wall that has a full surface area on one side plus a second side of surface area, you can go for that. And I, I figure with this wall, if there is a if he puts another gateway down, let's say he puts it down like right here, then his gateway is going to be exposed. If he puts his gateway down over here, then his cybernetics core is going to be exposed. You can see that no matter where he really puts this down, um, just because of this formation, something is going to have two sides of exposure. The best is if the cybernetic score has it so that you can kill warp gate before it finishes, but a gateway will do. A gateway will do. Okay, so I look at that, I see, okay, I don't think he's going to be able to wall this off properly. I like to be a bit gambly when it comes to ling flooding. I like to be, I, I'm inclined to ling flood people more than I'm not, just because it's very difficult to hold, and even if they do, typically the amount of resources invested, if we, if we do the calculations, right, so we have, we make 12 links from 30 to 42, and we've made four lings um, from earlier. So that is a total of uh, 12, 14 times 50. That's 700 minerals of resource, if my math is correct, which it should be. Yeah, it's 700 minerals worth of resources, which don't get me wrong. That is an expenditure, but it's not that crazy when you consider if they put down like three gateways or lose a unit and put down like two to three gateways, they are giving up not only map control, but also they're making the resource equivalency basically even. Okay, so I see with my overlord, okay, it's this gateway. This gateway is exposed. The cybernetics core only has a little bit of surface area here. We're going to have enough links we can attack both anyways, but our primary focus should be the gateway. You see what I'm talking about? How there's one, two, three, four, five, six... Um, let me try to get a better angle. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 lings that are able to attack this gateway at once. That's too many. That's way too many. Um, so we're just going to go ham and we're going to kill this gateway. <clears throat> and you'll see he's forced to wall off behind it. Look at the pylon positioning. Once again, the pylon positioning making it very difficult. They would like to just put nice gateways down so that it, it blocks off big chunks. He goes double shield battery. Now, as you can see, there's no way the shield batteries are going to be done in time. So he just has to keep attack. Uh, we, we just A move. We're not doing anything at this point. We're A moving. This is great. This is fantastic. <coughs> we cancel warp gate. I'm happy as a clam to just keep attacking. Keep A moving. What am I doing behind this? I'm droning up. I'm making queens. I don't have to look at this fight anymore if I don't want to, but I'm making spores in preparation for his Void Ray. I'm droning up my third. We're just attacking this whole time. Look at how much... Let's look at the resources lost, even at this point. Look at that. 1,100, almost 1,200 resources lost. Warp Gate denied. So he's got to restart his cybernetic score. He doesn't even have a gateway. So he needs to wait for a gateway to finish and then make a cybernetic score. I could leave right now with these lings and just go back home. And the game, if we wanted to enter the mid game, we would be insanely far ahead. We are slightly behind in drones, mainly because I'm not spending my money and I'm not injecting efficiently behind this. Um, in a real ladder game, you should be doing that. And normally I would like to say I do that, but let's be honest, we're all pretty shitty players. We see a bit of weakness here with the last gateway. Uh, that's our ticket in. We get in. <coughs> Again, he could hold this if he really wanted to. 
<clears throat> but obviously we're just kind of practicing a game and so it doesn't really matter we're causing a whole bunch of damage we're killing his probes now we're ahead in drones we're ahead in resources lost i can lose every single ling here and it won't matter uh we're just we're just too far ahead i did another ling flood again it, you don't have to do this you're more than welcome to just enter a mid game being extremely far ahead here in fact i would recommend you macro from this position instead of going for another link flood like i do here yeah so i leave the game just because again i'm not trying to go into a full 20 minute game but you can clearly see how far ahead we are right now um if i had not made those things and i made drones instead i'd have a fully saturated mineral and on my third i could go into whatever build i really want to whatever all in it doesn't even matter i could drop a spire and go for mutas at this point doesn't matter we can go for whatever we want this last one i'm going to show you guys is a bit more attack of opportunity i would say um so sometimes <coughs> i will just have it that i want to do a link flood that game i don't see anything particularly wrong with their wall but again I'm kind of a risky, gambly sort of person. So sometimes I will just Ling Flood people because I think, well, unless they're extremely good, they're probably going to take too much damage and it'll basically work out even. Okay, so in this game, I think they make a pretty good-looking wall. So the, the wall isn't in question. But what I want to do is show you, if you go for the random sort of YOLO Ling Flood, <clears throat> and even with this their cybernetics core is very exposed we could do a good amount of damage to it um this is he makes an adept coming up but this is even easier to see with a zealot okay so i'll show you what i mean i'll show you what i mean here in a second and obviously i know that he's done this but what i'm going to show you is how to um you you want to look at your ling flood even if you're backing away for this purpose okay so let's say i get here and there's like a shield battery or something or there's something over here that goes ah shoot okay i don't want to i don't want to pressure against this he's really prepared i don't think i'm going to be able to do any damage let's just go back home let's just back off here and not worry about it but watch your ling flood for a second if you ever see this move out of position you should obviously immediately go back in and get this and try to get this around because if you're able to do this even with a shield battery going we've now just we've just won the game so always 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 e even if like you're retreating just take a look see test them for a second it is a big instinct for people to a move whatever unit is in the wall um instead of hold position it's difficult for people to just not touch that unit because that's what they need to do if they move it at all, you can actually run your lings in. You can force click your way in. Your lings will start kind of leaking in one by one. Or if they don't have it on hold position and it follows you, try to jump back on it. Try to get the kill. And then obviously here it's it's okay, it's game over, right? Like that is that that is, like I said, more of an attack of opportunity than anything else. And uh <clears throat> it's GG. So those are the three Ling Floods that I like to do. Um, the next one I want to show you guys is Bane Bus. But before I do that, does anybody have any questions uh, about the Ling Floods or about the process in general? Any, any sort of questions from, from you guys in chat? Happy to answer them. Uh, if not, <coughs> I can go ahead and uh, show you guys the Bane Busts. And the Bane Busts are, like I said, they're way more all in you're contributing and spending a lot more resources in order to successfully um uh, like like do the attack but it is way 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 more powerful than a link flood is obviously no questions from you okay we'll continue forward if you guys have any questions feel free to just throw them out in chat i will usually either answer them immediately or at the end of whatever we're talking about so this is the pylon in the wall. This is one of the easiest mistakes to to catch and to see. Okay. Uh, and it's on Pride of Terrace. This is one of the more notorious maps where people will mess this up. 
<clears throat> and I'll show you why. After the game, I'll show you exactly what this looks like from the Protoss perspective. This looks like a very flat area over here for Protoss, right? And this is specific to this map, but it can happen on other maps. And the same thing will apply. Usually, again, ramps, I don't like to Ling Flood against ramps. But if I see something specific, I will try to go for the kill. This whole little circular area right here is unbuildable for Protoss. You can't put anything here. So a lot of Protosses underestimate. They'll put their pylon like right here even. And that will block their gateway from being put down. They can't actually put down a proper looking gateway. They have to make like a really janky looking wall. Their pylon has to go like, it's somewhere weird. It's like here. And it just seems very unintuitive because normally Protosses put their, their pylons from the, like, between their nexus and their wall, somewhere in there. Okay, so you'll see this mistake a lot. Keep an eye out for it. It is a very easy one to just get some, some easy wins, honestly. <coughs> okay, so similar opening. Our overlord gets there. And immediately I see, oh, piling in the wall. Okay, uh, I'm going to go for a Link Flood. Or, for, sorry, for a Bane Bust. A little bit different. He also has a, a large gap over here, but he could seal it up with another pylon. Uh, and that might hold because I don't have as much surface area as I normally would. But a Bane Bust should kill this for sure. Okay, so what do we do differently? The only difference we're going to do from the other builds, from a normal 16, 18, 17 is after metabolic boost, we're staying three out of three on gas and putting the Bane less down immediately as soon as we get 50, uh, 50 gas. I even like to take it before my third, if I can. So I'll, I'll make it on 30. I'll make a 29, 29 third base. It's no big deal. And then from here, we can drone back up. The most important thing, of course, is you make your overlord. I even might just start making lings here. <clears throat> You can, because you're going to have like four to five less lings than normal, and we're pretty all in as it is, you can just make lings and not refill your minerals. So you'll be minus two drones. But again, we're pretty, we're pretty all in. The other big difference is if they do not send their unit out, I like to um, I like to send my lings across the map nice and early, and I just start moving them immediately. Because if I can hide them, we can start making Banes as soon as the Bane Nest is finished. Make sure you're not too close because if they see Banes, they're going to freak out and start walling off again. And we need, I believe it's, yeah, it's five Banes. I make six. Usually it's good to make at least one, maybe even two extra. Just spend all of your gas into Banes. Simply because if they have something that immediately will kill or, or you get unlucky or whatever, and they kill one of your Banes, then you're going to be in a big sad time. Okay, so you can just send your Banes in. Obviously, you just attack the Pylon, and now it's game over. <laughs> I mean, that, that's it. We had an extra Bane. I accidentally blew it up on the building. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You Bane Buster, you depower literally everything that they have. They can't warp anything in. They would have to put a Pylon down, finish it, and then they could finish warping stuff in. Uh, is GG at that point. Very easy to see. Super, super, super uh, easy to, um, to execute as well. The next one is uh, a little bit more difficult, but you can, if you start getting a good sense, you start really analyzing these walls, I, <coughs> I'm confident you can identify these because these are tricky. These are tricky even for Protoss players to I see that they've done something wrong. But you can get easy wins, easy wins with these as well. Um, so in this one is going to be the pylon too close to the gap in the wall. I even said, again, this is Jig. Yeah, give us doors. It's a perfect, uh, perfect name. Um, over defend this. You know, make shield, pre-make shield batteries. Just blind make them. Whatever you want, right? It's the same setup. Overlord goes forward. And I see, okay, this is pretty scuffed for a couple reasons. But number one is the pylon in the wall is incorrect. 
Um, the opening is also a little too wide, but if you put a stalker there, it might be okay, especially since there's a little spot here it could retreat to and it could be okay. Um, but we're, I wanted to show you guys the Bane bust anyways, right? So the pylon is right up next to this gateway. Super, super close. So that is an issue. Um, and that is something we can capitalize on because Bane splash damage is so huge. So very similarly to last time, metabolic boost, stay three out of three on gas and put a Bane nest down as soon as possible. I think I take my third first. It's not a huge deal. If you do make your Bane Nest a little bit later, it could end up biting you in the butt. But here, he's got a Stalker, which is the worst unit for Banes to try to splash on. He's got three shield batteries, but he's only got one pylon. He would need a second pylon here or the reaction speed of a god in order to, um, <coughs> to save this at this point. Okay. I see that he has a soccer. That means he's not moving across the map. We start moving across the map with our lings. And I get there a little bit later, which means I do have a few more banes than normal. Okay, so we're making banes. We have three, six, seven. So really, it's it's like one more bane than normal. Uh, you could probably do this with six. Going for seven is safer. But here's what we're going to do. We're literally, we're just going to attack the, the Stalker here. If they have cannons, you could run your Lings in first to try to tank this first shot. So I tank the first shot of the Stalker with my Lings. And then I back my Lings up. And now we're, we're just going on the Stalker. We are clicking on it because we want it to die. And there you go. Shield, the, the pylon dies because of the splash damage. And we're in, baby. A little bit trickier to identify. I even have one extra Bane. So we really only needed six. We maybe only needed five. I think the Stalker took six to die. Um, but I like to, again, I like to have the extra just to be safe. So there you go, guys. There's five Protoss walls that I think are pretty easy to identify. Practice it in your games. When that Overlord gets there, just take a look at it. Take a look at the wall, see what you can do, see, see, you know, can we, can we do anything with this and take some risks sometimes. If you feel, if you have the instinct, I don't know what's wrong with the wall, but I think something is wrong with it. Go for the link flood. Give it a try. Worst thing that happens, you lose that game. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's just one game, right? So definitely give it a try. Watch these over. Take some notes. Uh, start link flooding people, man. Ling floods and bane busts are so 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 strong uh, because it's it is very difficult to make a good Protoss wall in this on this ladder pool and just in general mistakes are easy to make with it. So I hope that was helpful. Again, if you ha guys have any questions, you can ask me here if you're in the Twitch chat or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can ask me down below in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer them for you guys. And please make sure you subscribe to the channel because that helps me out a ton. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.